Uh, this is Joy from Kodila Technologies, Bangalore. And uh, after quite a long time, we have uh, finally come up with one more Magento tutorial for you guys. So, <clears throat> in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about UI components. Now, I understand this might be a let's just say a rather difficult topic among the Magento developers or the Magento community itself. And one of the main reasons behind it is. Uh, let's say the lack of documentation. So there's there I didn't find any proper tutorial or any proper documentation uh, Of UI components anywhere and that might be the reason why uh, people find it difficult, but Once you understand how UI components work once you understand the structure of a UI component once you start to use UI components I guarantee you it's it's not that hard. I won't tell you it's easy, <laughs> but it's not that very difficult actually so what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be making a simple UI component in Magento 2 and uh, before we do that first we're going to explain what are UI components and then we're going to see the parts of an UI component and finally we're going to see the technologies which are used in a UI component, I mean to render an UI component, which is mainly the KOJS or the knockout JS. I guess you guys might, might have heard of it. So these are the things which we're going to do right now. So let's start with what are UI components. Don't worry, I won't give you any bookish definitions or whatever for UI components. What I'm going to say is, let's just put these below here. Yeah. So what are UI components? To understand that first, let's understand that M Magento is an MVC framework. It's a framework built on top of the MVC architecture. And the M and C part are pretty self-explanatory, but the V part of Magento is divided into three distinct parts. Let's start with layouts. So we have layout, we have block, and we have template. So these three things, the view part divided into these three things makes the whole uh, view section of Magento extremely powerful. So we can use the layouts to edit blocks, to insert blocks, to delete blocks, to modify sections of a page and whatnot. So basically we use the layouts to modify the skeleton of the or the structure of a page and the final blocks and templates, a combination of a block and template can be used to render a specific part of HTML into the page. So if you understand that, Next we come to UI components. So UI components is nothing but the V part of Magento. So that is the layout block and template part of Magento. So uh, these three things rendered in the front end. That's it. What are UI components? They, is, they are the layout block and template part of Magento which are rendered on the front end. So the Magento's uh, view part or the layout part section uses PHP to render the final HTML into the page. The UI components on the other hand use JS, HTML, CSS or the front end uh, languages which are available to us to finally render the HTML into the page. So that's all UI components are. Now that that's clear, we come to the parts of an UI component. So a UI component has like I said, three parts, the layout, which is, let's call it layout itself, the block, which we'll be call calling the view model, and finally the template, which is a knockout template. So these are the three parts of an UI component. Very simple. Uh, we're going to be explaining it with an example real soon. And then finally, the technology is used, like I said, it uses Knockout.js extensively. It, it has made a lot of layers on top of Knockout.js, but on, the, on its core, UI components are nothing much than Knockout.js. So now, let's make a simple UI component. Uh, let's say we'll make something like a, a clock. So we'll make a clock which will show the current time and which would update that time every second, just like how you would expect a normal digital clock to behave. So. Let's start with an example then. Uh, as you can see, I have my IDE set up and I have created a very simple module called UI component which has a route which is called UIC demo and that route has a controller inside it. Sorry, it has a controller inside it. 
and that controller just renders the page so let's go to the layout part of it and if you open the layout for that you can see it just I just inserted a simple block on the content part the block has a class of Codilar UI component block and demo and it has a template of demo.bhtml so I'll open the block for you first so you can understand that so the block is empty right now it doesn't have anything that's because it's a very basic module which you're making so in the future probably in the next videos we'll be making uh, a lot of other cool stuff with UI components at, at that time probably we'll be required to have a few other functions here but for now a blank block is fine now coming to the template the final template so the template as you can see the first part of the template is a div it's a simple div having an ID of UIC demo container that div would be having the all the UI so basically our UI component would be rendered on this div inside this div and we also have specified a scope here which is UIC demo in this case and now we, I'll, I'm going to show you how we use that so here we have a script type text x magento in it so don't worry if you haven't heard of this this text x magento in it is just magento's way of uh, it's a tag which magento has created where we specify a json here inside the tag and this json is rendered by magento and magento initializes a lot of jquery widgets on top of dom elements using this x magento in it so what we're doing here is first we specify the dom element where we want our widget to be initialized which is uic demo container as you can see here inside that we have we are finally initializing our ui component which is magento ui js core app so inside magento's core directory we have an app.js which is responsible for the complete rendering of the component which is a js file which is our block in this case and our template which again is an html file which is bound to this component using knockout and before that we have a scope over here which is matching as you can see with the scope defined here the reason the scope is important is we can reuse the same scope so a scope contains a component and a template so we can reuse the same scope over and over in different parts of the page just by using data bind scope is equal to whichever scope we want so where that would be important is let's say we have a magento page here so the cart is on the header right so as you know the cart is also a ui component in magento so let's say we want the cart to be displayed on the footer as well so we can do that just using a div here and we can render the same ui component using the same scope which is let's say cart now coming back here so we have two very important files first is our component and second is our template so our component would be inside so we have codilar underscore ui component slash js slash view slash demo so that would be codilar ui component view front end web js view and finally demo.js so i'll just open that file for now and then finally we have the template which is codilar underscore ui component slash demo so we have the template inside our template directory but as you can see we didn't mention template over here the reason being magento auto appends the template here so when we write codilar slash ui component we automatically mean codilar ui component view then the scope which is front end web template and then we write demo so as you can see we didn't write demo.html as well because that is also uh, appended by magento's system so we'll open the demo.html as well and now that's it so when we write all of these our ui component should be rendered so now let's see what is rendered inside first we come to the template so the template is as you can see very simple it's a one line template uh, it has a h1 tag where we have data bind so the data bind is the attribute which is used by the knockout engine to render dynamic content into the dom so here we have text which means what should be the text inside this so what should be written inside this h1 and the text as you can see is get time so get time is a function but where is this get time defined so now we come to our view model which is our js file so the js file uh, as you can see it's a define module uh, we are defining a module with two dependencies the first dependency is ui component uh, so we need this dependency 
no matter what we are doing, whenever we are doing something with UI components, this dependency is required. And we have one more optional dependency which we are using here, which is KO, which stands for knockout. And now we have the variables declared for both, which is, I just given it the same uh, for simplicity's sake, uh, UI component and KO. And then finally, let's just make it a little bit simpler. I'll delete this and this for you. So we have the initialize method. So the initialize method is like the constructor of our block, if you may. So if we consider this as a block class, the initialize method is the constructor. And this dot super is which we are calling the parent constructor. So as you know, even in PHP, we always call the parent constructor whenever we are extending something. So we are extending UI component and we are calling its parent. So this initialize will be called whenever the UI component is rendered. So after that, if we come back to the original JS file, in the HTML, you see we are calling the get time method. So this get time method is defined here. And as you can see, it is returning this dot underscore current time. So this current time variable is initialized to a knockout observable variable and the uh, default value or the initial value is set to loading. So until and unless everything is loaded, it will be showing loading. So what ko.observable is, it's, it's basically a type of special type of knockout variable which we can use to data bind. So whenever we bind some data using this syntax, we have to bind it to knockout variables so that it uh, automatically updates the DOM. So this is where knockout is different than other frameworks uh, such as let's say jQuery. So it's different than jQuery DOM manipulation or even code JavaScript DOM manipulation. And how it's different is that we don't have to do the manipulation manually. Whenever we bind some variable to a DOM element like so, so whenever that variable changes, the DOM would be updated automatically and all of this happens through knockout. We don't have to do the DOM manipulation manually. So that makes code maintainable and maintainability a lot easier, trust me. So use knockout whenever possible, right? So uh, coming back here, we have initialized it to loading. That is, that is the initial value to it. And then in the constructor, which is the initialize method, we have just called a set interval every second, which we'll call the update time method. So what the update time is doing, it's just updating the current time variable with the new date. So what that will do is every second, the variable changes, which in turn is bound to this DOM element. So what we should be able to see is the value inside this H1 should change every second, just like how a digital clock works. So let's try it out, uh, enough of explaining. So if I go here and type UIC demo, you can see that, okay, it's loading, it's loading. And now, as you can see, the UI component is rendered and the DOM is changed every second. So the second is changing. And we're not, we haven't done any DOM manipulation manually, correct? We have just bound, uh, used data bind of knockout to bind one variable to it. And we're just changing the variable and automatically the DOM is changed. So this, I hope, was a very basic module for you guys. So it would be, it would uh, help you get into UI components so you can understand UI components better. And in the future, you can use it to do complicated operations like the cart or the checkout. Even the checkout is in a, uh, is a UI component, but that is a lot more, I mean, it has a lot more children. It has a lot more branches, but the basic, root of it is same even the checkout even the cart has one js file and one html file and if it has children each children would have one more js and html so like that we can form a tree of ui components and render a whole page so thank you guys uh, that's all for this video i guess uh, if you if you I, I mean i think you won't have any doubts for this tutorial uh, i'm gonna be leaving a packaged zip file of the entire project which we have just created here so you can download and you can use it in your own magento distribution to see how it works and just uh, play around with ui components and uh, if you have any suggestions for the next video please leave it down on the comment section thank you